All right, after a little bit of thought, I've decided I want to change the image button to be something else. And the reason being is I've decided uh, uh, we're going to use this lock icon instead. And we're going to change our um, text view. Instead of saying list files, we're going to say lock files. Because this makes a little bit more sense of maybe something that you might actually do uh, with a... Um, you know, a super user command uh, that we're going to use. So we want to be able to click on this and actually do something. So how do we do that? Well, um, we're going to use the same method that I used in an app that I made previously called uh, Real Control or Radio Interface Layer Control. Uh, we talked about it a little bit during the uh, introduction video as well. Now, it's great because I can just copy and paste from this app into the other one, and, but you're like, well, how do I do that? Because i got to type it all by hand. Well, fortunately for you, since my app real control is on GitLab, you are welcome to go ahead and download that and use that as a template for building your own apps where you're using a super user uh, or root permission to do something. So. You can just go here to uh, GitLab, look up uh, Alaska Linux user. You're going to see a lot of my material there, and among them will be this app, Real Control. And you can just download it right here as a zip or a tar or whatever the case may be. And then you can add that to your uh, application. So you'll be able to open it up uh, in Android Studio as well, uh, just like I have it open in Android Studio right here and you'll be able to borrow uh, any of the code that you need from here. Um, notice that it's going to be kind of the same setup where it's going to be under Java, this main activity, that's what you're going to want. So we'll just go ahead and close all of these other things because we don't need them right now. And um, in here when you open it up you'll see a lot of different things. But we talked about how we have these methods, and these methods are opened uh, by these little brackets and closed by these little brackets. And we're just going to take one of, one of these methods, and we're going to use the stop real now method, um, but uh, we'll talk about it more in depth in just a second. So we're going to copy that, and we're going to go back to our main activity. And not at the very end, because you don't want it outside of the application itself, this main activity app. You want it inside that, but after the last of everything else. We'll just paste it in here. And it says, hey, if you're going to use that, you're going to have to import these other options as well. And you can just say OK. Now, The, uh, the interesting thing is, this has a few uh, different options and things that we're not going to need here. Um, for instance, this part that's in red is actually for changing a button to look like something else. So we're not going to need to change the button to look like something else. And we're not going to need to change the button to look like something else. So we'll just say, didn't need that. Um, but also it has this countdown timer, which we actually don't need that countdown timer at all. So we can just delete that. So all that we have left is uh, this little method that has a try and a catch. And we'll talk about that in a second. But first we need to name it something. So we're going to call this lock our files. That's where we're going to call this. Um, method lock our files. And we'll go ahead and save that just so we have that available here. When you do something in uh, in Java, 
um, that could potentially be dangerous or could uh, lock things up or could uh, fail or cause a problem, you should always use what's called a try and a catch. So what essentially you're saying is I want you to try to do this. If it does, great. If it does not, I want you to catch the failure for me here, right? And uh, in this case, when we catch that failure, we actually want to make what's called a toast. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. Uh, and that toast is going to tell us what went wrong. Okay. So uh, what we want this command to do, here comes the important part. So essentially, you're looking at making this app because there's something you can run from ADB or from the terminal on the phone with super user or root permission that will do something, and it will work. And this is very, very easy to implement in, uh, in this Java code here in Android. So essentially, we need a string, which is, you know, uh, this is a string array, and there's a lot of things that we could talk about about that. We're just trying to keep it really simple. This array of strings is uh, each one of these portions before the comma is a different part of the array, and these three things get put together to make one string. So the first part of the string is going to um, execute on the terminal the command su or super user. So it's saying I want to do something as the super user and what I want to do is run this command dash c super user command and then the command that I want to do is right here. Um, in this case it was actually stop real daemon but uh, we're going to put our own command in here. We could say um, you know we've named this lock our files so we could say chmod uh, you know, um, and uh, we'll say uh, uh, 666, um, yeah, 666, uh, or we could actually say, you know, chmod. Oh, uh, we just want them to be readable, so we'll say 444, um, everything in our uh, data directory. And so, um, or I guess probably SD card would be better. Yeah, so SD card. So everything in SD card, we want it to be you know, um, readable only. Uh, now this command would be any command, you could replace it with any command that you want to run uh, with your, um, you know, from the terminal, essentially. So an easy thing to do would be to test out, you'd really want to make sure that you test out the command, that the command is rock solid, that's going to be, um, you know, a good thing uh, for you to do. Uh, you know, Android runs on a Linux kernel, so it's very uh, similar, not necessarily all the same things, but if we make a uh, directory here uh, that I'll just call uh, test dir, and if I cd into test dir, and I'll uh, touch a new file, I'll call it uh, file1, touch file2, touch file3, and then if we look at those files, we see that uh, we have these three files that are read, write, read, write, and read. Um, or in this case, 664 is the numerical values of them. So if I said, um, if I said uh, super user, dash C, and then this command of chmod uh, 444 uh, s, well in this case, um, let's see, test dir, 
it's going to ask me for my password because uh, you know this is on my computer but uh, oops, <laughs> can't even type my own password right Well, uh, actually, that's right, because here on Linux, I would use probably like sudo, um, sudo su, um, and then it would do what I want to do with those files. So now if I ls-lah uh, the test dir, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just kind of ruin those permissions because I actually don't have permission to look at any of those files in there. Um, now if I sudo look at them, uh, they're still in there. Uh, sudo uh, dash ls da, um, sudo ls lah test dir And where's my tester right here? And I've made it just to be uh, read, 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 only 444. So you do want to be careful um, what uh, what your command is that you're trying to run. Um, and now if I look inside there, I can make them all readable, readable, readable. So if you were to run this command, it's actually going to make all of your files only readable um, and not writable and not executable in your SD card. So this is probably not a command you really want to use. Um, it's just that that's what we're using as our example here. So once again, this is an array of strings. The name is real stop. In this case, we'll call it uh, lock files. And uh, it's going to run the command super user dash command dash c. And the command that you want to run is this third part right here. And this is whatever it is that you're building this app for that requires super user permission. This is how you're going to use it right here. Now, this lock files is the name of the string. So the way that this gets executed is runtime, get runtime, uh, execute lock files. And notice it'll help you autofill it there, which is pretty easy. So it's going to go ahead and do that command, whatever that whatever that is. So we'll save that here. And now what we want to do is we want to map that to our button. So if we go back to our button and we click on our button, and we have this on click. Notice that now lock our files, that method that we put in there just magically appears, which is really, really handy. And we, so we just click on that, and there we go. We can save that. And now clicking on this button, tapping it with your finger, will make it run this lock our files method, which we put in here, that runs this command. And if that command fails, it's going to make a toast. So a toast is the pop-up that you get that, uh, you know, when you're using an app and you see a pop-up. And we're going to look at those pop-ups in just a minute. But, uh, but I just wanted to show how we're going to run our command for our uh, application first.